1980, alongside the little Renault, came the next giant step in rally car technology, in the form of the five-cylinder turbocharged four-wheel drive Audi Quattro. Audi was an old name in the German industry, but it was relaunched in the 1970s on a worldwide basis as part of the VW family. The company's roots went back to the famous pre-war names of Auto Union and DKW, so innovation in technology was nothing new to them. These two brands have produced some of the world's most famous racing cars and motorcycles. The new Audi, however, had been launched with some rather mundane family saloons, and by the end of the 70s, company management had decided that a change of image was needed. Vorsprung durch Technik, progress through technology, was the Audi slogan, and the Audi Quattro represented true Vorsprung in the world of rally competition. It was as significant to rally car development as the Lancia Stratos had been seven years earlier. Rival manufacturers had initially been sceptical about four-wheel drive's advantages in rallying, thinking it too weighty and too complicated. The Quattro soon made believers of them. It won the first rally it ever contested, the Austrian round of the European Championship, only two weeks into the 1981 season. Then, in what was essentially the car's development year, Hannu Mikola won world championship rounds in both Sweden and Great Britain. Obviously, much of the focus of the 1982 world championship season was going to be upon the Audi effort. Even more so because one of their best chances of taking the title was the attractive all-woman team of Michel Mouton and Fabrizia Pons. The dark-eyed French woman had already proved herself the equal of any male rivals by winning the San Remo round of the World Championship in 1981, the first ever such victory by a woman. Michelle is still the only female to win a World Championship motorsports event of any description. Other team drivers were Flying Finn Hannu Mikola and on a limited event program the speedy Swede Stig Blomqvist. But even before the end of the 1982 season, Michel had outscored these formidable teammates in terms of both wins and places. The most serious rivals to Audi's bid for World Championship glory were always going to be the combination of Germany's Walter Rohl and the well-proven Opel Ascona. But even he recognized the threat posed by Audi's new technology. In erster Linie, was mir Anfang des Jahres klar war, dass mein Gegner eine neue Technologie ist, ein neues Auto, ein vierradgetriebenes Auto, das den Weg in die Zukunft weist. Und gegen dieses Auto werde ich wahrscheinlich verlieren. Walter was never one of Rallying's most flamboyant characters, but he was a fearsome and intelligent rival. Certainly, no one overshadowed him in terms of driving skills, and he was never a pilot who adopted the win or crash strategy. If he knew his car couldn't match the pace of the Audis in certain conditions, then he would gladly settle for whatever points he could get, rather than go off the road and get none at all. And so it was that by the final World Championship rally of the season, on West Africa's Ivory Coast, the championship had come down to a straight fight between Rawl and Michel Mouton. Thanks to her efforts and those of Mikola and Blomqvist, the Audi Quattro had already wrapped up the World Manufacturers' Championship. Michel had scored three outright wins for the team, and Mikola and Blomqvist had scored one each. The question in Africa was whether Audi could take her to the individual title that she so richly deserved. Sadly, tragically, the answer was no. Her father was dying from a terminal illness as the season drew to a close, and Michel at times felt like withdrawing from the title battle. But it was her father's last wish that she should continue to strive to be motorsport's first ever female world champion. So strive she did. Cruelly, the championship was taken from her grasp in the very final stages. Rawl roared on to victory as a devastated Michelle sat by the roadside with the Audi's transmission broken. <laughs>